if that is what you're being told, you should be challenging yourself to ask, is that really true? What really makes me believe it's true? Is it because authorities are telling me that? Or, or can I think of any other way around it? I wonder, you know, in your career, which, you know, you're still young, but you've, you've seen, you know, you bridge the gap from, the, you know, the greatest physicists uh, of the of the 20th century and now into the 21st century that, that you're helping to lead at the vanguard. I mean, what do you see as a difference between the way that theoretical physics works? There's a, a book now called Lost in Math by a physicist named uh, Sabina Hassenfelter in Germany. It was very critical of modern theoretical physics. Uh, of course, uh, she gives a real short shrift to experiment, but she, which I think has blossomed in astronomy and cosmology experiments in particular, of course, I'm biased, but, but she really says there haven't been any new, you know, theoretical developments in physics since the mid seventies. I, I wonder, do you, A, do you agree with that? And B, do you think that's a symptom of, of something, if you do agree with it, or, or, or is there something else going on in the culture that, uh, that we need to be aware of? That's a good question. Uh, I, I think there, um, I think that the, um, there, the last few decades has been um, a, a unusual in the course of theoretical physics. I think, you know, when I, when I was coming into the field, up until the time I was coming into the field, I think there was very close interaction between theory and experiment, both in the areas of fundamental physics and there was soon to be in, in cosmology, uh, let's just say particle physics, fundamental physics and, and cosmology. And um, I think that the, um, the uh, beginning in the 1980s, there were an, you know, two prevalent ideas that began to take over many people's thinking, one of which was uh, what we call superstring theory or string theory in ter as, a, as a possible description of the fundamental forces and, and constituents of nature. And the other in cosmology, this idea of inflationary cosmology, the idea that we can explain why the universe is the way it is because um, uh, the universe, after the Big Bang, underwent a period of rapid uh, stretching or accelerated expansion that smoothed it out. And um, these ideas propagated in a way which didn't, um, in, on the string theory side, had very little connection with observation, because string theory more or less involves energy scales that uh, are beyond our uh, direct testing. But to the degree to which it had some implications, uh, some strong suggestions of what we should see, uh, what we learned over the last decade since then is that essentially all those suggestions have not worked out. Mm -hmm. So string theory suggested that we should have a whole new set of particles called supersymmetric partners that were supposed to be observed at the Large Hadron Collider at CERN. We don't see those. Uh, it was, it's, suggested that dark matter is probably a particular kind, species of particle called a WIMP, a weakly interacting massive particle. We don't see that. Um, it is an idea which is hard to accommodate with the idea that we, that was, the observation that we've discovered since the, uh, uh, since the in, um, introduction of string theory, the discovery of the universe is uh, ex undergoing a period of accelerated expansion. That seems hard to accommodate in string theory. Uh, the idea of inflation seems hard to accommodate in string theory. Um, so, and yet the idea is still prevalent today. It's prevalent because, you know, several generations of young theorists have been told from the start that, you know, this is the only idea we have for making a, uni a, a unified theory of quantum physics and gravity and the other interactions. And perhaps it's so, but when you have a track record like that, you would expect no, under healthy conditions, there should be other ideas out there. You know, there should be a, a healthy opposition that says, well, here's some uh, competing ideas. And I think that one of the things that's happened in string theory, and I'll talk again about cosmology in a moment, uh, is that there's also a strong, there's a new element in the game, which is a very strong social network. Mm -hmm. uh, it's related to the internet and it's related to the way the field has self-organized itself. It has a very strong socio-political component to it, as well as a scientific component that strongly encourages students to, you know, to, to take this idea and assume it uh, as an essential ingredient from the start. Mm -hmm. So I understand that they're enthusiasts, but it disturbs me when I hear a young person begin with a statement like, 
well, we all know string theory is the correct description of the universe. And based on what? Where, where, why aren't you questioning that assumption? It goes back to the second kind of impossible idea. Mm -hmm. it, if that is what you're being told, you should be challenging, your, challenging yourself to ask, is that really true? What really makes me believe it's true? Is it because authorities are telling me that? Uh, because there, or, or can I think of any other way around it? It just surprises me that there isn't more competition. Mm -hmm. And there's a similar story in cosmology. The story is a little bit different. Uh, their uh, inflation began, the idea of inflationary, inflationary universe idea began as a rather simple and compelling idea. Um, uh, in fact, that's, it was the study of inflation that brought me into cosmology in the first place. Um, but what we discovered over the years is two interesting things. Uh, number one, that the early ideas that we thought inflation would, our early ideas of inflationary cosmology and what it would predict, those predictions turned out to be verified by observation so far, with one notable exception. Uh, on the other hand, we learned that the theory doesn't work the way we thought it did. It doesn't make those predictions at all. Uh, is, you know, we had not properly understood how the theory would work, how, what the role of quantum physics would be when combined with gravity when you have inflation involved. And so at the same time, the justification for those predictions has disappeared. We really need a new idea. And again, you know, what's happened in the field is that because our early misconception of the inflationary theory led to so-called predictions, or what we thought were predictions that turned out to be true, many people just take for granted that the theory must somehow be right, even if our understanding of the theory today doesn't correspond to our early understanding of it. We, that is to say the predictions are no longer, can no longer be justified as coming from the theory. Uh, and again, there's uh, just too few people who are challenging the idea that we have to have a big bang or that we have to have inflation, even though those ideas are not really explaining the data that you and other colleagues of, of yours, the experimentalists and observers are finding. Uh, in fact, one of the things that inflation would generally predict is that you should have had um, a spectrum of gravitational waves that should have been of, of cosmic wavelengths, cosmic scales, and they should have been strong enough to be observed today. And so far, we're not seeing them. And that's, you know, even observationally, a, dr a direct challenge to the theory. And um, nevertheless, what you see is that what most people are doing, including most young people, is they're just trying to add bells and whistles to the theory that will help it to evade the current observational constraints or the next round of observational constraints, rather than ask the obvious question, which is, uh, uh, is it possible that the ideas in which we've been assuming all along are wrong? And if so, can we use the observations we have to come up with a new and better idea? Mm -hmm. So it's been a strange period where uh, strong social networks and uh, you know, supporting these different ideas and, and the way, in fact, supporting the two of them together oftentimes, you know, has helped support ideas when I, there certainly has to be opportunity for new ideas given what we've learned.